Hey, Julie. Hi, Dean. I lost you there for a second. That's good. Okay, Are you so not? Like, yeah, thanks. Uh, okay, Julie. So, <laughs> oh, you're good. So, um, Julie, uh, let's start off by let folks know a little bit about you, and then I have a question for you. Okay. Hi, uh, I'm Julie Candelon. I'm a fractional CMO. I moved from France to Silicon Valley in 2007, and I work with uh, venture-backed startups and Fortune 500 companies like NVIDIA, Amazon, or RingCentral. Uh, back then, when I started, they called us outsourced marketers, and today it's a fractional CMO. I specialize in B2B tech firms that have complex sales cycles. And um, this month, my second book, Point Taken, was released. I co-wrote it with 10 women business leaders, and each of us share their best business advice they ever got. All right. Um, okay, so here's my question, Jill. What's a fractional CMO? And what does a fractional CMO typically do in, let's say, the first 90 days of a hypothetical one-year-long engagement? Today's day one. Like, what's a fractional CMO, and what's going to happen in the first 90 days? Well, I see a lot of CMOs that are trying to transition to fractional CMO. And the, the, the distinction I see really with a fractional CMO is um, you, you split your time between several companies, but you're not an agency and you're not a consultant. That means that um, mm -hmm. people who hope to only stay at the strategic level and not get their hands dirty should call themselves consultants. To me, a fractional CMO Hi. joins the company and really digs deep. And, and tries to uh, be an agent of change, really understanding all the different aspects that can help the company get to the next level. So I think the first- What happens 90, in the first 90? Uh, yes, the first 90, 90 days are, are critical to um, typically rebuild the trust in marketing because usually when you're hired as a fractional CMO, there's something that's not going right. Uh, unless it's a very small company that never had a CMO before. But if it's not the case, then yes, rebuilding trust with the leadership team and the CEO is the very first step. And then taking whatever team you have to the next level by mentoring them, showing them where is the next big thing for them to be successful is going to be also uh, the first approach. Understanding how to build the machine long term to be successful, but also finding quick wins. That to me is your first 90 days. Yeah. And Chris, how about you? First of all, Chris, hi. Tell us a little bit about hi. yourself. <laughs> hi. Hi. My name is Chris Bechtel. Uh, I'm a fractional CMO and growth marketer. Uh, I'm really a, an entrepreneur's marketer. Uh, I started my first company, a rap video, a uh, music video company in college, and I co-founded and exited a startup. I've mentored over 500 startups with tech stars and other accelerators. Um, so I'm super excited mm -hmm. to share my insights today, you know, on how fractional CMOs can can drive substantial growth. I've spent 20 years in B2B SaaS and the last really in six, six years in AI. So I've really specialized in driving growth and scaling startups from, you know, sub 10 million in ARR to eight and nine figures and often in like very competitive markets. So I founded Growth Engine Labs, which is a, a, a consultancy and fractional CMO uh, group to and I've used uh, my own proprietary growth engine method, which is really helping companies identify gaps and unlock their growth potential. So what does the first 90 days of an engagement look like for, for you or even a typical fractional CMO, let's say? Yeah, great question. I mean, I think there is a lot of, I think two things are really important. The first is, of course, super understanding the business um, right. and what are the core problems that are happening in that business. And often, yeah, I, I get called in as sort of a fixer when things are not going very well. So I have, you know, as a part of my methodology, a really four step process. And I look at uh, a whole bunch of things in the first 90 days. I have four phases and the first phase is really assess and reveal because you have to understand what's going on. So you can really, right. you know, find ultimately growth opportunities. I think the second big thing is is managing expectations. Um, there's a lot of expectations put upon marketing, especially when companies need growth. Um, but sometimes those expectations aren't realistic because it takes some time and especially any kind of, you know, significant growth initiative. And some of the most significant, uh, I think we all see the, the, some of the best leads we all get come inbound and often right. through search. And it takes time to increase and scale that channel. 
Uh, we can't do a lot in 90 days. Um, so I think a lot of it is managing those expectations and what, what, what are we going to be doing after those 90 days and what quick wins did we discover during those 90 days that now we can implement? Well, let's talk about then, um, let's pretend I'm the, the CEO at the client. Okay. And I've convinced someone like the leadership team board or myself to allocate uh, a year's worth of spend for, to bring in a fractional CMO. Okay. Looking at that, looking at that commitment I've made, like how do I get maximum value out of that one year engagement from a fractional CMO? Do you think, or if you prefer to look this way, how do companies, you know, put aside that spend and then waste it by, not doing something or insisting on doing something that sort of mutes the FCMO's abilities? Well, I think the most effective way to get maximum value out of the first year of a fractional CMO mm -hmm. is to really, you know, to align the organization behind uh, the key initiatives that are discovered, right? Because again, you're bringing in a fractional CMO to identify opportunities for growth right. because growth has been stalled. And so ultimately that person has expertise that they're bringing in. And again, they're, they're, they're actually really looking at the internal resources as well. How do I maximize the resources that are there? How do I add supplemental resources, maybe team expertise, sure. uh, in order to then capitalize on the growth initiatives? Again, you brought me in because of my expertise, and we've looked at the data. We've come up with hypotheses. And we've identified growth initiatives that uh, have meaningful impact and that are measurable. And that ultimately the, the goal out of the first year to get maximum uh, effort and get maximum results out of the first year of a fractional CMO is really to apply those growth initiatives. And of course, you know, not everything works, but ultimately over a time, you should be able to identify enough growth initiatives. I'm a big rule of three three person that one of them are going to deliver fairly significant results and deliver ROI. The CMO should pay for themselves in that first yeah. year for sure. Julie, what do you think? Like, how do companies waste the money that they spend on fractional CMOs, or like, how do they get best value from one? I think um, one of the key aspects is to not think of marketing as uh, an entity that works in a vacuum. Uh, you really want marketing to be uh, connected to all the different parts of the organization and to mm -hmm. work in sync with everyone else. Um, one, one aspect that uh, I see very often is there is a need for an overall cultural change. And if the CEO is not on board with it, and if he's not helping be an agent of change as well, then it, it's very hard to make it work. So uh, that's part of the responsibility of the CEO to make that a success. Um, and the third aspect, which is also uh, related to how we all work together and, and goes back to, you know, having the right set of expectations, marketing is only going to be successful if we accept that we're also going to fail. And uh, part of everything that we're going to try to change has to go through iteration. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a fan of trying to get everything perfect. I'm a fan of going fast and try to apply best practices, but being okay with failing, being okay with mistakes that we fix over time. Right. When you develop a software, you're not expecting 100% uh, bulletproof code, and there are fixes and patches, and marketing is exactly the same. So... Um... Let's talk about this then. Let's imagine that there are already people like working in marketing, like junior, maybe mid-level folks, right? Maybe even like a supervisor slash manager. Um, if I'm the CEO and I've brought in a fractional CMO, like how will that, or how should I expect that team to be different a year from now at the end of the one-year engagement? versus the fractional CMO's first day? Like how, how would they be different or ideally better, you know, compared to the day before the first day you show up? I think, uh, well, regardless of how the team grows or doesn't and, and who gets hired or not, I think there are three key aspects when I, when I think about how to manage the teams that I oversee. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is they need to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Uh, they need to be okay with everything being up for questioning. Uh, 
maybe they expect at the beginning that what they've seen as broken is going to get fixed, but that's not necessarily true. Some issues might get ignored because they're not going to move the needle in terms of business goals that uh, we want to address, while some other activities that they consider as working well might be just on paper and we are going to dive deep and change or kill the activity altogether. So they need to be comfortable with everything being up for reassessing and, and change. Um, I think the team also uh, will have worked hard for a full year and you can expect their resume to be really showing that effort mm -hmm. and, and they can potentially become, uh, you know, good, good people to hire on the market if they do their job well after working for a year with a fractional CMO. And I think the mentoring and, and the, the support that they're getting are also going to enable everyone to be bolder and to be owner of their activity. And so you can see new opportunities and a, a team that's going to drive things more and, and potentially uh, be more independent in, in how they work when you start looking for a new CMO to hire. Uh, the goal is really to not just bring up the business, but bring up the team so that the next CMO coming in really has a, a right. rock star team. And Chris, how about you? How does that, uh, I mean, it, you work mostly with startups, so oftentimes they're probably, it, there might not be much of a marketing team at all, right? Or just a small number of people maybe. So, but I mean, how should that team be different or better at the end of a, a one-year engagement with a fractional CMO? Chris, we can't hear you. After a one-year engagement with a fractional CMO, uh, the team absolutely, I think, is going to feel more empowered, more clear. Mm -hmm. One of the most important things that I bring to the table, I find that the teams need you know, two things. They need clarity and resources, right? They need clarity on what's my job, where does it begin and end, um, what are my responsibilities? I'm a big fan of OKRs, objectives and key results, mm -hmm. and I find that really empowers employees to own a key metric. Right. And especially in the marketing team where there's different disciplines and whether it's content, paid media, uh, organic, social, all of them have different skill sets and different objectives and different KPIs ultimately that are going to lead to our overall growth. So I find that if I can provide clarity and resources and the resources come from mentoring, absolutely, uh, perhaps budget, tools, training. Right. So that at the end of that first year, I feel uh, most teams are going to feel uh, super empowered. Uh, they have more knowledge. They have more confidence in, in knowing what works. And, and I think absolutely having a culture, uh, you know, there's a growth mindset uh, that's necessary. And that is one that where you need to take risks. You need to have an experimental mindset. You need to be able to look at the data and make inferences. I think there's a misnomer. You know, we all think a lot of the world thinks, oh, marketing has all this data now. Right. And everything should be completely black right. and white. There's no guesswork involved. But the reality is that everything, everything in growth is a hypothesis. Right. We we look at the market, see an opportunity. We see a set yeah. of customers and personas and we think, OK, they're the ones to market to. We think that's the right message and this is the right mix of channels. But we can get things wrong and that's OK. And that's the opportunity. I think the, the whole adage in Silicon Valley, you know, fail fast. I, love, I think that's great. I prefer learn fast, right? Learn quickly, have small wins that you can then apply. So ideally, the, at the end of that first year working with a fractional CMO, the team has the confidence, the clarity, and the resources to know how to continue to, to look for growth and find those opportunities. Yeah. Okay. So let's, um, let's go even deeper into that little team, okay? And there's somebody on that team, they're just out of college. This is their first ever full-time job. And they're the most junior person on that little marketing team. Uh, thinking about that person, they've, no matter how long they've been at the company, they've probably never, uh, they may have had management in the, in marketing, but they've never had leadership in marketing, right? And there's no one at that level. So what would you advise that person as the newest person there? Like how did, how should they, what, how, what can they do ask whatever to get like to take the best advantage and i mean that in the best sense of the word take best advantage of this one year opportunity to work or or be on a team with a fractional cmo like you know someone who's got a lot of marketing experience in different companies chris 
Yeah, I think that's a great question. I, I, if I, I would advise a young person, it's their first marketing job, they've entered a startup and they're working with a fractional CMO, mm -hmm. I would advise them to take full advantage of that situation through really trying to explore all the areas in marketing if possible so they can really learn what their skills and interests, where they lie. Because the mindset's kind of different in different areas of marketing, right? A paid... Uh, paid media mindset is quite a bit different than organic social, right? Uh, long form content is quite a bit different than writing ads and uh, landing pages. So you have to, I think, take advantage of the opportunity to kind of learn where are your skills and interests lie. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other thing is also building up your confidence, right? Because, of course, when you're first out of school, a lot of it is you just don't have a whole lot of confidence in yourself. Um, and, and I think there needs to be confidence. And really, that's focused on, on the intuition of it's all about the customer. And I think the more that we can teach those younger folks to really understand the customer and be more customer centric, that's always the answer is right. to put ourselves in the shoes of the customer. And even the most junior marketer out of college, they've experienced marketing and advertising mm -hmm. and they have some sense of, you know, intuitively, what would make sense for this customer if I can really have clarity on who the ideal customer is? All right. Um, that's a really good answer. Hey, Julie, so I want to change the question a little bit, like invert it a bit on you, okay? Imagine that you've, uh, you know, it's day one and you're the fractional CMO for the next year. And through some weird quirk, some weird timeline, Star Trek y kind of thing, there's, you're also, the most junior person in marketing at this, like you get to talk to 22 year old Julie. Right? Okay. What advice are you giving 22 year old Julie here in 2024, right? Almost the middle of the third decade of the 21st century. Who's probably going to be in marketing for the next several decades. Like what would you tell that, that Julie to do or learn or pay attention to? Um, I think the, the biggest uh, game changer for me uh, that I would uh, tell myself to, to start younger is mm -hmm. to really work on empathy and trying to understand what my leaders are doing and why they're doing that. So being in their shoes and really being curious enough to ask questions about why they're choosing something or why they're implementing a specific strategy. Uh, the, the way they're communicating everything is, is a gigantic source of information and analyzing and shadowing those leaders is, is really what takes you to the next level. Wow, all right, good answer. Uh, okay, Julie, I have another question. It's my, uh, we ha we're gonna wind down, so it's our last question. I'm not trying to be impolite, okay? <laughs> okay. Not trying to insult anybody. Um, Julie, there are easier ways to make a living than being a fractional CMO, right? Mm -hmm. It can be an enormously frustrating job. Why do you do this job? Like, why? Why? Um, I feel like I'm leaving 10 careers in one. Honestly, the uh, opportunities to uh, experience different situations, meet different leaders, um, this is exhilarating. I, I live in a very fast environment, and I think I would get bored if I was just an employee in one company. Yeah. I like the challenge, I like the change, I like variety. learning, and I feel like uh, I'm on steroids being a fractional CMO. All right. And Chris, how about you? Like, why, man? You could be nestled in some like cozy corporate job right now. Like, why are you doing this? Well, I really love being a fractional CMO because I, I find that most of the people that I'm working with, of course, CEOs, founders, uh, chief revenue officers, and others are their entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I, I am an entrepreneur's marketer, like I said, mm -hmm. and those folks are, have the entrepreneur, the founder's dilemma. I They're your people. Yes. And they have many ideas, which I can relate to many ideas, but it's all about execution. So right. I find that I am, I am their right hand to help them navigate which of the ideas they should be prioritizing so that they can capitalize on the founder dilemma and all the ideas they have, all of mm -hmm. the, the breakthrough risks they're ready to take, but they need folks that are ready to implement it. And I love uh, to be able to help people actually bring breakthrough products to market. Um, 
And I think that's super exciting. Uh, our world needs disruption to improve things uh, across the board. And that's kind of an exciting place to be. All right. That's great. Uh, okay. So, um, Chris, take us out. Start the process of taking us out. Who should be contacting you these days and how should they do it? Great question. People that should be contacting me today, people come to me when they're really looking at growth, when right. either A, they've got a team that's either, okay, they, they just don't have the budget for a senior leader full time. They've got a solid team, but they need help right? People come to me also when they're a little bit struggling for growth. Maybe they're entering a new market. They've got a new product launch. Maybe they're entering a new geography, right? They've got a challenge in growth and they need outside expertise. Those are the people that should be coming to me. Um, absolutely. If they're looking to expand into the U.S. from outside the U.S., uh, those people should be coming to me. If they're looking to expand outside the U.S. into other geographies from the U.S., they, they should be coming to me. If they, they're wondering, hmm, you know, our growth is stalled for one reason. Right now in 2024 in B2B SaaS, it is a very challenging time. Absolutely. Right. With the way socioeconomic things are happening. Markets are uh, dynamic. They're not fixed. Things are changing all the time. So uh, if you want to be ahead of the game and execute rapidly, because those are the things, those are the companies that are succeeding today. So people should come to me if they want to be able to execute rapidly, be able to fill the gaps in their funnel and accelerate their own growth up ahead of the next competitor who's just about to emerge uh, before you even realize. So execution is really the key, and that's why people should come to me. And how do you prefer that they get in touch with you? And people should get in touch with me, absolutely. They can visit me uh, here at LinkedIn on my profile here on screen. You can also visit me at growthenginelabs.com. And my email is cbechtel, as you can see on the screen here, B-E-C-H-T-E-L, at growthenginelabs.com. And I look right. forward to uh, talking to anyone and uh, exploring how we might be able to be a fit together. And Julie, who should contact you these days and how? Well, um, in addition to being a fractional CMO for enterprise software companies, mm -hmm. I'm also a limited partner in an investment fund. So I'm also interested in talking to female founders and uh, companies looking for advisors, especially board advisors with a go-to-market background. Um, this is really something that I'm uh, interested in developing right now. The fractional CMO side, uh, is very successful, and I'm, I'm having fun on the side with uh, this activity that gets me closer to founders. All right. Well, uh, Julie and Chris, thank you so much. This has been great. I learned a lot. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. And um, you're probably watching this in a clip. There is a full episode on YouTube. But uh, glad you joined us for this little bit, and we'll see you next time.